After we've done some research and found the bird we want to make, we want to do a rough outline and then only on one side, fold it over, trace it carefully. You can use a pencil or a Sharpie. Um, I like to go sometimes with a pencil and outline with a Sharpie. Don't be too concerned about identical sides because you know they're, it's a bird and it's going to be different. Now, once you cut it out, if you cut the detail feathers, start from the outside and come into that inside V where the feathers um, overlap, and it'll be a lot easier for your details to come together. And then if you're while you're cutting, if you twist your paper and your scissors simultaneously there, it'll be a lot easier. So <clears throat> I like to get pictures and look from the side and multiple perspectives and I tape it together and then I tape it onto the paper maquette. And from there, we can get some ideas. Once you get it on the cardboard, you wanna cut the basic shapes of the cardboard out so it's a lot smaller and uh, it's easier then to get your detail cutting done. Now with the staple, you bend it open, put it in the middle, and then you would like to get a staple pliers. You can hot glue it on there. Either way will work. Four staples is ideal. One to cover the middle one and one to capture it in the end in between the two. If you pause it there, you can see it. Again, I now I make my body separately and I add it on there. And I wanna tape everything down so it's definitely not gonna move around once we move to paper mache. Um, so just try to get it as close as you can. You can pressure, put more pressure on it and you know, make it fit to where the body seems like. So I'm constantly going back to my images on my computer screen to make sure that my proportions are correct and getting it as rough, roughly close as I can. For the most part, it'll come together. Overlapping the tape helps, um, crisscrossing it. That's definitely be something we're gonna talk about once we paper mache it but I'm gonna get, get it on there so it's secure. This is the cheapest uh, masking tape the school can afford, so it doesn't stick very well. Once you get to the head, do it on the opposite side, so the top side for the head. When you tape it down, uh, make sure you wrap it around there and press it on pretty well. And I'm going around and I'm really pressing that tape on there so it doesn't um, let go. When you get to the beak, you can rip little pieces of tape in half and then come around on it, but then, Check for it for sure. Make sure your proportions are correct. Now here's that little piece of tape I was talking about and I wrap around the beak. If it gets to be a little bit too big like I did here, I'll just trim it back with some scissors real carefully until it's you know as close to proportion as you can. The more accurate you are, the better it's gonna look. <clears throat> so that beak's way too big. So here I am and I'm going to trim it back. The whole process should be fun. You should be enjoying this. I it's pretty cool. It's going to be frustrating if it's your first time making a bird and you're 12, but don't fret. Just hang in there and uh, you'll get better every time you make one. So I've made literally probably dozens and dozens of these birds at this point because um, this is a project that I've enjoyed doing. I made them for an art show once. That's kind of how I came up with this concept. I like to lay out the proportions. So that's a chicken wing, right? There's the, the the double boned piece, the flat, and then you got the leg part, which is actually just the what attaches to the, the breast. It's really like their shoulder bone. So I end up doing that on both sides of the bird just to make sure that my proportions are accurate, right? And then I put a little bit of uh, paper towel in there to bunch it up and add that assemblage of muscle tissue. So bone and muscle tissue are building up really, and that's all it's to a bird. It's like their body, their head, their, their wings have that that wing part uh, where their bone and their muscles are, and the rest is just feathers, so it can stay flat. In fact, we're gonna uh, ignore the fact that this bird doesn't have feet, and it's gonna be a little anatomically incorrect, but you won't even really notice it once it's hanging up. So <clears throat> I'm gonna tape over the staples. I'm just making sure to press my tape down. If you have higher quality masking tape, this is not such an important step, but for us it's in my class, for sure, press that tape down. Um, and give it a once over, you know, you might need to add a little piece here or there if there's like some missing spots, like right there on the side there, I see there's a little bit. And then uh, we're in paper mache. So there's a decal to paper, which is kind of amazing the way that the uh, fibers, once they pulp the wood, realign themselves. So you can rip it in one direction, you'll get these nice strips. If it's not working, you have to flip the, the paper towel the other way. Um, same thing with newspaper. If you want to paper mache with newspaper, that's fine as well, or any paper will have a decal and there'll be some pattern to that and you'll be able to rip it in strips 
but not every direction. So it's one direction for the decal. Once we start paper mache <clears throat> you pour a little paper mache in your cup, you wanna paint paper mache. Now it's glue, so you have to put the glue water underneath the paper towel when you put it down. It's very important. A lot of kids miss that up and that's okay, but you'll have to take it off and restart. So make sure you put a little bit of glue water under it. And this is just Mod Podge with a little bit of water mixed in. Um, it's my go-to paper mache. I know it's not as environmentally friendly. It's like some wheat paste, but that you don't have to worry about allergies. And it is archival. And archival means it'll last a very long time. So for me, it's worth it. Um, it's a little stinky. It's got a little vinegary smell, but it's non-toxic and it'll last a lifetime. And it's pretty cool. They'll end up feeling like a hard plastic because it is an acrylic polymer. So I go around, I paint the big pieces. I, if you notice, I they made two different sizes, long thin strips and then kind of square faddish strips. And the square strips are for the flat parts. And when we get to the rounded parts, you're gonna wanna use those smaller strips. And I put them down, I attach one side, and then I paint it in the opposite direction. Once that one side is down, and I just let it form to the shape that I'm painting. So wherever that lays is where that that is going to stay. And you just wanna paint out any of the folds and try not to get the folds in there if you can, because they'll, they'll stay there. I mean, you can cover those up later on if you need to. But mostly you wanna start with one side and then just carefully put it down. If there's a little bit too much like that, pick it up, put it back down again, no big deal. So as you move, best to crisscross and not do it in all one row, like in a pattern of one over top of each other, horizontally, crisscross them. The more crosses you have, the stronger they'll be in the long run. And it just sort of like ties the whole project together. So you can make it and cover it up lengthwise, like, cause that's where the wing bone is underneath there. And then I'm going to eventually go around the wing with a few pieces. You really only need one solid coat, but two coats is ideal. If you get two layers of this paper mache over top of it, it's gonna be hard like a rock and it's gonna be super solid. Everything down the road becomes easier. The more care you take, the better your projects end up. It's sort of like in carpentry, you wanna measure twice and cut once, with paper mache and art making in this sense, you want to just make each piece count. So the more time and care you take to attach each piece, the less work it is down the road because you don't have to worry about filling in any little gaps with your paint. Uh, it's just much cleaner. So just slow and steady wins the race. And it's not a race, it's just about having fun. If you're not having fun, you're not doing art right. So take it easy, have fun, enjoy the process. And uh, yeah, this is, this is what we do. And while you're doing it, you can talk to your friends and hang out. And if you're by yourself, enjoy it. Because if you can't hang out with yourself and have fun, then it's difficult to do it with other people. So here I get to the wing parts. You wanna make sure that when you put your paper mache down, I didn't do a very good job of videoing this, um, but that's okay. I eventually will come to part. There we go. So I put a piece down and then I'm gonna wrap it along the edge. And so I'm doing the head, which came out of view because I'm a novice at this here, video making. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit better there. So that's a long piece, no big deal. I'll just paint it right down. As I'm moving along, I'm looking for any gaps and inconsistencies that might need attention. So there it is, and I cover that up. And I'm looking at the edge of the wing now. And so that is where it goes on. And then I wrap it right around and try to take any of the tension out of it so or the slack and so you want to create tension and and as you put the piece down a little bit goes a long way you don't have to pull it harder else you'll pull it right off of there but a little bit of tension on your your paper towels you fold it over will take all those little wrinkles out and it'll be pretty clean and if there's any little wrinkles we can always fill them in so getting into the painting process, you wanna really look at the patterns that are on your bird and get a rough estimation of you know where those colors go and you can play around with, with what you're doing. But in general, try to match patterns, right? We talk about patterns and layering things. So you wanna paint in the direction that the feathers are. So if you can see there, I'm painting and then my feathers just end up being there when I pull a little bit of that darker color over the lighter color. So. And then just, that's it. You know, my, my recording stopped my painting and you probably are happy about that because it makes the video shorter. But in general, just have fun. Try to get a rough estimation of painting and colors and here we are. Um, but here's the finished product because my 
my recording stop. So it's pretty close. Now I'm not super happy with how these eyes turned out. And I don't think I put a video on how to make the eyes. Let me see if I can. Okay, so I'm adding in this video here of how to do the eyes. So I, I like to use paper towel, just that's what we have at school. So a quick color code, we use um, Sharpies, colored Sharpies, but I didn't have any. So I just use some paint and then I just dab a couple dots for the eye. Now this project is super small, so it's a little bit difficult. Um, to get an accurate eye in there, uh, but you know, the best we can. Then just take your hot glue and make a little dab over top of it. I always make multiple eyes so that I can pick the best ones. And once you're done with the hot gluing of the little blob of eyeball glue over top of it, take, get some water, hot water works best. Um, run it under the water, let it soak for, you know, really like 30 seconds or so. And then you can pull it out and they'll peel off um, and you have these little eyeballs, which are pretty cool. And so you can see that all four of my eyes, then I'll pick the best two. I can take some scissors and I can trim all those little uh, hairs off and also round them out. So I put them on and I didn't really like how they looked. Uh, once I had a side view with the, with the eagle, they kind of pop out too much. They look like bug eyes. And if you look at the eagle, he's got those kind of big eyebrows. So I'm gonna peel them off. And look at that. It actually looks half decent underneath the one side. Uh, so I might keep that, but I'm gonna take my razor and carefully, you'll see that's like very rubbery with the um, Mod Podge when it dries. It's, it's like a, a soft plastic almost. It's pretty cool, but it's difficult to cut with a dull knife, which I have. And so you wanna be extra careful with your fingers, sharp knives or safe knives. <clears throat> Come and get one if you need one. So I'm gonna indent that eye a little bit so that I have a more protruding eyebrow, uh, more accurate to what the eagle is. And you just wanna experiment. So I just get a little glue on there. And once I cut the eye out and I make one cut in the top, I'll just put the glue inside of it. And I put the eye back over top of it and I kind of push it in a little bit so that it looks more accurate to what uh, is represented on the actual eagle's head in the picture that you can see in the upper left there, which <clears throat> I don't have now, but I will add that in when I edit this video. So I hope you learned something, maybe, maybe not. And this is mostly for our teachers. There's no way that my students are gonna watch a 13 minute video, um, but that's just the way life is. Maybe I'll make a two minute reel out of this, but there it is, a little more accurate. I'm much more happier, Blech. happier, much happier. I'm not always so keen on speaking these wee hours of the morning, um, but yeah. Do the other eye. This one is kind of cool. It didn't act, you know, end up as I wanted it to. It does almost tells a story. It's like the fast rabbit that got away and scratched his eye, and he's kind of has like a lazy eye and this eye, and it might not have full vision. So this right right eye is looking accurate and really good. The left eye is where the rabbit got him, and uh, that eagle doesn't have full vision, but that's okay. We move on.